In today's video, we're going to be talking about how to create a, a graphic UI like I have up here for the hearts and the ammo, so that as I'm fighting zombies and these variables are changing, you can see them visually represented instead of just using numbers, which is a little bit more engaging for your players than if I die, you'll see my hearts go down too. So these are actually really easy to do, and this will probably be vastly the shortest video uh, I've ever made on this series. Uh, so first of all, I want to go ahead and turn off basically all of these variables. The only thing, actually I don't think we need any of these here except not even player health, none of this needs to be here. Uh, the crate exposition you can turn off if you go into the crate, it'll show up under the crate. You can turn that off too. So now what I want to do is create sprites that will be the graphics for my UI. So I'm going to go ahead and say uh, paint, and we're going to call this first one is going to be, uh, we'll call this ammo. And for the ammo sprites, uh, really, it's pretty simple. Really, all I'm going to do is I'm going to copy what my bullet looks like. I'm going to paste it into here. Uh, and then I am going to name this uh, costume one. And then I'm going to create costumes for every amount of ammunition I could have. So we could also have zero, in which case nothing should show. Um, or you could have put a message here that says, like, out of ammo. Um, and then I'm just going to keep going. This is all there is to it. So now that we have all of these bullets in here, uh, the first thing I want to do is go ahead and set them where I want them. So I'm going to put them, I usually put them right around here in the corner so they're not going to be too in the way. And then uh, the code that we're going to need for this is we're going to say when we click start, we're going to start by hiding because we don't want this to show on like the welcome screen or some of the game states. Uh, we're going to also go ahead and set it to the front layer because we need to show up in front of all of this stuff. I also usually stick in a go to position because uh, if I ever accidentally drag this away somewhere, I want to make sure I can click start and it'll uh, it'll go back to where I want it. Then I want to go ahead and put in a forever loop. And in this forever loop, we are going to have an if else. And the if else is going to say if we are in the game state. So if we're you know playing the game, then we are going to go ahead and show our uh, our ammo indicator here. And otherwise, we're going to hide it. And then we're also going to go ahead and switch the costume to however much ammo we have. Since our costume names are the same thing as the amount of ammo in each bullet, we can just go ahead and grab the ammo variable and stick it right here. And uh, this should work. So now if I click start and I, I play the game, uh, you'll see Ooh, we did something a little weird there. Just a second. It seems to be working, although the first one seems to lose two ammo. So let's see, maybe I made a mistake in my costumes. Okay, so it turns out the problem with this is that if you are going to give Scratch uh, a, a, a number, like an integer, and you're trying to try to switch the costume to an integer, what it's actually going to do is it's not going to use the names of the costume, it's going to use the numbers of the costume right up here, uh, which is very annoying. But we can fix pretty easily, because since our costumes are still in order, all we have to do is add in a plus one. So we just take whatever our ammo is, and we add one to it, and uh, this should now work. So now uh, our numbers go down nice and smooth. Looks pretty good. When we run out of ammo, it goes away. When we get our ammo back, it comes back. Perfect. Uh, so next up, we want to do something very similar with hearts. So I'm going to go ahead and say paint to get another one. Uh, and then I'm going to go ahead and look for, I think there is, oops, I think there is a heart costume. Red heart. Perfect. All right. And so what we're going to do is the exact same idea, although now I know that it doesn't matter if I label these or not. Um, so exact same thing. I'm going to create a bunch of these. And uh, yeah, I'll see you when I'm done with that. All right, so now that we have our hearts, I'm going to go ahead and stick those up here at the top right of the screen. Uh, I can go ahead and hide ammo now, too, now that I know it's working correctly. Um, and what we're going to do then is uh, almost the exact same thing. We can actually probably just take this code and stick it in here. And I would guess that it will pretty much all work. Uh, the only things we're going to want to change is obviously we're going to a different place. Uh, now we're going to wherever we put the hearts. And then instead of ammo here, we are doing player's health, so player health. And uh, let's see if that works. So we start at two hearts. Uh, we, as we take damage, we lose our hearts. We get to zero hearts. There we go. And if we upgrade our health, uh, let's say all the way, now we have all eight hearts. Uh, and the same thing would apply if we can run into a zombie here. We'll see we lose those hearts one time. Cool. 
Uh, that is all for this video. It was a real short one. Uh, I will see you in the next one where we are going to talk about uh, basically wrapping up this game. I think it's going to be uh, the last or the second to last video. We'll be doing uh, dynamic difficulty, so making the game harder the further right to the screen uh, you go, and we'll be putting in our, our challenge condition, which is the distance how far you've gotten to the right, which is our goal. Uh, we'll make zombies drop gold, and they'll drop more gold the further on we get, and we'll have some different types of zombies. We'll add in some big zombies and some little zombies that work a little bit differently. So I will see you guys then.